guys welcome to my youtube channel you are still watching uh, eta now guys today i'm not gonna waste too much time i'm gonna be doing the last question question six on um on the metric paper for how thing 2023 um so without waste of time let us read what the question says. Now the question says the graph f of x is given by a times uh, x squared or a x squared. A x squared. So that's the graph we have. Now before we even continue, now guys, are uh, these two graphs functions? The answer is yes. Now, how do we know if we draw a vertical line wherever? If it crosses once on a graph, the single graph, uh, this is not one graph, it's two graphs. If you if you if you write a vertical line, if you draw a vertical line, it will only cross once. Therefore, these are functions. You use a line test, a vertical line test. Vertical line test to test if a function, if a graph is a function. Okay. Now, let's see what the uh, question say. They said point A minus one, two, and B uh, are points of intersections of F and G. The graph F has a turning point at the origin okay as we can see on the graph there's no need to explain much but um, we can all see these functions all right now let's go to the questions calculate the value of a and b we have a function f of x let me write it down we have a function f of f of x f of x equals, this is 6.1. f of x equals ax squared. And they want us to solve for the value of a and b. Now, if we have a known coordinate, it is much easier to calculate. We have a known coordinate, and um, that coordinate is coordinate A, which is uh, okay. Our A is coordinate minus one, two, and that coordinate is part of this graph. This is your x, and this is your y. So let us replace f of x is like writing y. So this is two equals a, okay. Now two equals a, so a equals two. All right, if you don't understand, please go to the comment section. Now, the value of b, b is g of x, it's a hyperbolic, uh, graph. So g of x, say g of x equals uh, b squared. b squared. Eh? No, b to the power of x, sorry. b to the power of x. Okay. Now, using the same coordinates, Two equals a b to the power of x is minus one. Okay, this means that b equals uh, b equals one over two. Because uh, 
if I if I if I okay, let me let me exp express two in such a way that it has a minus uh, one as one of the multiples. Now two is given by two to the power of one. which is um no sorry yeah no sorry uh what we know is that two equals b to the power of minus one is actually one over b yeah this is how it is if we cross multiply it means b equals one over two. I don't want to use uh, uh, complications. I don't want to complicate uh, things. I could use my, my own head uh, to simulate the answers, but this is not the right time. I have not forgotten that I am teaching uh, grade 12, so not first year uh, students. Now, let us go to question 6.2. Now, question 6.2 says the inverse of f is not a function. Write down at least one condition which can be used to restrict the domain f in such a uh, such that its inverse will be a function. Now, it's true. The inverse of a parabola is not a function. Now, why? Okay, let me just show you practically. This is the index. This is the inverse of, of our function, our function f. Now, how do we know? If you put a mirror, if you put a mirror line there, put a mirror line, then you get a graph like that. Now, to make sure that you get a function, you need to restrict one arm. If you cut your parabola here and take this arm going to infinity, you will get a function. You will get a function because it means on this inverse, we'll only take one arm and when we take one arm and we do the vertical line test it will only cut once if we remove one arm so therefore if i take this arm of our function f of x this to define this arm we have a domain the domain will be Okay, let's see, six, sorry, 6.2. If we take the arm where X is less than or equals to zero or if we take an arm where X is greater than or equals to zero, it will give us a function. Guys, don't forget to put an in inclusive inequality, an inclusive inequality. Okay. Now, uh, we're done with 6.2, then let's go to 6.3. For which values of x where x is given by uh, minus infinity um, and zero will g of x be less than or equals to f of x for which um, x values where let's see For which values of x 
where x is the element of minus infinity uh, to zero. If you check carefully, um, for this domain, we have a function because they've restricted the parabola from the minus from the minus section of the x uh, values to zero. So they are asking for which values of x will the graph g of x be under or equal be under or or where is intersecting be under the graph of f of x let us just go to the graph and check it visually now they've they've restricted the domain from minus up until here so this is where we are checking we are only checking this side on these two graphs this side we, we're not going to care about this one because we have been restricted all right this is the graph of f of x this is f and this is g so where is it where g is less than f if you can check starting from that point going to that direction the value of g is going to be less than f or the graph will be under okay so to define that domain we can say minus eight oh sorry not minus in minus infinity going to this value is minus one minus one so that bracket means it's inclusive. And this one means it does not touch. The infinity does not touch the infinite value. So that's what we have. We, we can You can express it in many ways. You can also say that the domain where x is less than or equals to 1. That's also fine. That's also fine. So we can write it in that way. There's so many ways to express it. You can express it in whatever way. There's so many mathematical ways of expressing what I'm saying. 6.3. So we have x is less than, where x is less than 1. That's the domain we're talking about. Oh, you can write it in this way. Minus infinity. Um, minus 1. Okay, let's go to 6.4. 6.4 says if 6.4, it says if h of x equals g into x plus 3, write down the coordinates of a. First of all, let's talk about transformation. Now, let us ask ourselves this, this question. Is this transformation affecting the x axis or the x values or the y values? The answer is it is directly affecting the x axis. So this is a horizontal shift before we even go to the question. This is a horizontal shift. It is a horizontal shift. But how will your graph move? Before we even go to the equation, x plus 3 equals 3. Um, so it was zero. Okay. Let me not explain further. I will explain it later. Okay. And they are saying, um, write down the write down the co coordinates of a prime. This is the transformation. 
the new coordinate of A on the graph of H when that transformation has been applied. Okay, let's see. Uh, G of X, uh, G of X, we have solved the value of B and it was half. So we have 6.4, 6.4, 6.4, 4.1 okay now g of x we have solved it it turned out to be 1 over 2 to the power of x all right now if we transform it if we transform uh, the coordinate a the coordinate a, which was, A was minus uh, three plus uh, two. Minus, um, sorry, minus one and then plus two. So this is the coordinate of A. A is given by minus one, two. Okay. Now, this is the transformation. This transformation will yield in the following, will yield the following. It will, it will yield uh, it will yield the, the fact that um, X effective transformation will have an effect of, if you take three to the other side, it will be three. This is how you should always take it. So therefore, we're gonna take minus three minus three into uh into uh the coordinates to find the transformation so the transformation will be minus one minus three two for those who don't understand why instead of putting a plus i put a minus. Remember to solve the roots. You always have to take. Um, you always have to 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 take the numerical value to the other side in order to solve for x. So that's why we ended up with a minus three. And if you don't understand, I can even explain further, but um, I don't wanna explain it now. If you have any question, you can go to the comment section. I will explain it to you. And the other thing you will notice is that the Y value is not affected. This is just a horizontal shift. A horizontal shift of a plus. A horizontal shift of a plus has a negative effect on the coordinates, always. Just remember that. So our A prime will be minus four less two. Okay. Let's go to the next question. The next question says um, A prime prime, the new coordinate of A on the graph H, uh, on the graph H, the inverse of H. Now, we already have the graph of H, which was G, which was a transformation of the graph of G. Now we have this new graph. 
And what they are saying to us is, what are the new coordinates of A? What we know is that whenever there's an application of an inverse, the two coordinates swap as they are. Your X becomes Y and your Y becomes X, okay? So your A prime prime is actually the prime of A prime. A prime is given by minus four minus two. Now, what's gonna happen to, to the prime of A prime is that we're just gonna swap the two elements and we're done. Guys, if you do not understand what I was doing, please do not hesitate. Just go to the comment section and um, I will I will help you. I, I will even I can even set up a Zoom meet, a Zoom meeting for you guys so that you can understand the concept. But guys, that's all for today. I am going to the next one. Now, if you don't understand anything, guys, don't don't hesitate. I'm here for you guys. I'm here to help you guys throughout your studies until um until uh year end. And I am hoping for um, good results this time around. Now, if you have not yet liked, subscribed, or click the notification button on this YouTube channel, please do so, so that when I post more videos, more tutorials, uh, you guys can get more help. That's all for today. Thanks.